28. Catholic hymn book, hymn 28. Great man, so the King of heaven, to his peace the tribute bring, ransom pilgrims not forgiven, O thy peace. Sunday to you all. Same to you, Father. We thank God for letting us see the beginning of a new week. We thank God for all that He has been doing for us, for the many prayers that He has answered, for the many testimonies that have been given. May God's name be glorified and praised both now and forever. Amen. Last Sunday we celebrated the most holy trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We celebrated the divine love of God for mankind. Today, we are celebrating love in another way. This time, we are celebrating the giving of Christ's body and blood for us to sustain us and ensure we attain eternal life. Indeed, God loves us. And God has proven beyond every doubt that He alone can love us the way He does. And it is because of this assurance of God's love for us, that is why we present the petitions of our hearts to God at this Mass. Let us now take some moment to present to God all those things that we want Him to do for us. Because He loves us and He continues to love us forever. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins and beg God for his forgiveness and for pardon. For the many times that we have disappointed him, those times that we have not loved him as we should, those times that we have not loved our neighbor as we should, let us beg God now for forgiveness and for pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of her. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, you came to call sinners, Christ of mercy, Christ of mercy, 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Pray for the happy repose of all those who have died. 
We pray for God's healing upon our land, healing from sickness of one of all kinds, healing from the effects of the COVID-19 situation. Pray for the intervention of God upon our government, upon our land, in the politics of our people. All the intentions already presented and the intentions of those who have requested our prayers for them. Above all, we pray for holiness of mind and body. We pray for the gift to appreciate the love that God has shown us in the Holy Eucharist and the grace to receive Holy Communion in a state of grace, a state of holiness and purity. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated as we listen to the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you should keep his commandments or not, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let your, you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but that man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And you shall remember the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, with his fiery serpents and scorpions, and thirsty ground which there was no water, who brought you out of the flinty rock, who brought you water out of the flinty rock? Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O Jerusalem, glorify Brethren, 
The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the sequence. Zion, praise your Savior. Praise your leader and shepherd in hymns and canticles. Praise him as much as you can, for he is beyond all praising, and you will never be able to praise him as he merits. But today, a theme worthy of particular praise is put before us, the living and life-giving bread that without any doubt was given to the twelve at table during the Holy Supper. Therefore, let our praise be full and resounding, and our souls rejoicing, full of delight and beauty. For this is the festival day, to commemorate the first institution of this table. At this table of the new king, the new love's new past, put an end to the old past. The new disciples the old. The new displaces the old. Reality the shadow and light the darkness. Christ wanted what he did at supper to be repeated in his memory. And so we, in accordance with the holy direction, consecrate bread and wine to be salvation's victim. Christ's followers know by faith that bread is changed into his flesh and wine into his blood. Man cannot understand this, cannot perceive it, but a lively faith affirms that the change, which is outside the natural course of things, takes place. Under the different species, which are now signs only and not their own reality, there lie his wonderful realities. His body is our food, his blood our drink, and yet Christ remains entire under each species. The communicant receives the complete Christ, uncut, unbroken, and undivided. Whether one receives or a thousand, the one receives as much as the thousand, nor is Christ diminished by being received. The good and the wicked alike receive him, but with the unlike destiny of life or death. To the wicked it is death, but life to the good. See how different is the result, though each receives the same. Last of all, if the sacrament is broken, have no doubt. Remember there is as much in a fragment as in an unbroken post. There is no division of the reality, but only a breaking of the sign. Nor does the breaking diminish the condition or size of the one hidden under the sign. Behold, the bread of angels is become the pilgrim's food. Truly, it is bread for the sons, and is not to be cast to dust. It was prefigured in type when Isaac was brought as an offering when a lamb was appointed for the past, and when manna was given to the Jews of old. Jesus, good shepherd and true bread, have mercy on us. Feed us and guard us. Grant that we find happiness in the land of the living. You know all things, can do all things, and feed us here on earth. Make us your guests in heaven, co heads with you and companions of heaven's citizens. Amen. Alleluia. Hallelujah. 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 from heaven, says the Lord. If anyone eats this bread, 
He will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds of the Jews, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, so he who eats and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Once again, happy Sunday to you all. Same to you, Father. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Last Sunday, we celebrated the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, the mystery of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. The summary of last Sunday's message is this. The Trinity represents God's attempts to show us the depth of his love for us. Out of love, God created us. Out of love, God took our human flesh, died for us. And out of love, God remains with us as Holy Spirit. Last Sunday, we also noted, do not try to understand the Trinity. Rather, just know that God loves you so much that he is willing to do anything for you. It is this great love that we are celebrating today. The fact that God, while in our human flesh, gave us his very flesh to eat, and his very blood to drink, to sustain us and to guarantee our entrance into heaven. There are indeed so many lessons for us to learn today. Number one, the Eucharist is God's gift to humanity. The Holy Eucharist is God's gift to humanity. Recall that in our gospel passage last Sunday, we heard the words of St. John, For God so loved the world. I think that is the most popular 
uh, verse of the Bible, John 3, 16. John 3, 16, everybody else, what's John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave. You may wonder, what did God really give to us? If you say Jesus Christ, you are correct. That is even what John, what John wrote. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. However, come to think of it, a gift is not really a gift if the giver takes it back. Right? Jesus ascended to the Father. So where is our gift? What really did God give us? In very simple terms, for God so loved the world that he gave us his body and blood. That whosoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life and be raised up at the last day. You see, I just combine John 3.16 with John 6.54. Join together. Now we see that the real gift that God gave us because he so loved us is the Holy Eucharist. His body and his blood. Because it remains with us always. In other words, we are celebrating today God's greatest gift to humanity. The gift of himself made available in the Holy Eucharist. The second lesson we learned today. The Eucharist is our communion with God. The Eucharist is our communion, it is our relationship, it is our covenant with God. As a proof of his love, God offers us his own flesh and blood to eat, that by so doing, we would be in communion, that is, in covenant with God. So the Holy Eucharist enables us to share in the life of God. And when we receive Holy Communion, not only do we enter God, God also enters us. This is exactly what Jesus Christ said. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and me in him. In Holy Communion, we enter into God, and God enters into us. This is this beautiful. In all the religions of the world, Christianity is the only religion where God is disclosed to the people. While other religions teach that God is far away, is somewhere far away from us, for us Christians, we know that God is right here. That God is in the Holy Eucharist. So when we receive communion, we are entering God. As if God is so close to us. In fact, God himself acknowledged this in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7. When he said, For what great nation is there that has a God so near as the Lord our God is to us. God is so close to us. God is not far away. God is right here. In Holy Communion we enter into God and God enters us. As the saying goes, you are what you eat. You know that saying, you are what you eat. You become what you eat. So if you eat good food, you will live a healthy life. But if you eat bad food, what happens to you? You will not be healthy. So you become what you eat or what you eat becomes you. What you eat enters into your blood, it enters into your strength, it enters into the, the making of your being. So by the time you are eating the correct food, now we talk about diet, people, people are trying to lose weight, they say eat this kind of food, don't eat this one, don't eat this one, don't eat this one, no, this thing is not good for you. For some people who are diabetic, they say oh, avoid sugar, avoid this, because what we eat, it becomes the, the essence of our life and our health. Now. If we understand this saying, you are what you eat, what happens to us when we eat and drink 
the body and the blood of Christ. We become God, so to say. Or God becomes us. Or we enter into God and God incarnates himself in us. So we see the Holy Eucharist is our communion with God. Lesson number three. The Eucharist is the new manner for all who are heaven bound. The Holy Eucharist is the new manner for all who are on their journey to heaven. In today's gospel passage, Jesus noted, This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. John chapter 6 verse 58. This way, Jesus employs a very powerful image to teach what the Eucharist is about. In our first reading, we see Moses instructing the people of Israel as they were just about to enter the promised land. And some of the points that Moses raised. Number one, that the desert experience was a test. Number two, that God fed them with manna which they did not know. Even their fathers did not know what the manna was really all about. They did not know where it came from. They did not know how it is made. They couldn't just describe it. They just said it is like something, it is like something. They did not know the manna. Number three, that God used the experience to teach them that man does not live on bread alone, but on everything that comes from the mouth of God. Number four, that God did all this so that they would not forget him. Now, look at these four points that Moses raised in our first reading today. And let us try to apply these points to what Jesus says about the Holy Eucharist in our Gospel passage. Then we will see the following. Number one, that while the manna was a test, the Holy Eucharist is the real deal. The Holy Eucharist is, is as an, it, it, when, when the people of Israel, when they were eating manna, eh, what they were actually eating was a symbol of the Holy Eucharist that was to come. So you see, when we take the Holy Eucharist, we are receiving the real food that will lead us to the promised land. And what is this promised land? Heaven. So we are on a journey just like the people of Israel were on a 40 years journey to the promised land, we are on a journey of life to heaven. And it is the Holy Eucharist that we carry us there. It is what will give us energy. So you see, you see the, 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 the symbolism here. Why, for instance, Moses even mentioned the fiery, fiery serpent. Why the fiery serpent was a symbol, Christ on the cross was the real deal. Why manna was a symbol, the Holy Eucharist is the real deal. Secondly, as God fed them with manna to sustain them on their journey, God is feeding us with the body and the blood of Christ to sustain us on our journey to heaven. Thirdly, we cannot depend on physical food, but on the Eucharist, because it is what is proceeding from the mouth of God. Oftentimes, we interpret this to mean uh, the Bible, the Word of God. But while preparing today's reflection, I, it, it, it just suddenly dawned on me that what Moses was referring to as the thing that proceeds from the mouth of God is the Holy Eucharist. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And what is it that proceeds from the mouth of God? It is the Holy Eucharist. This is what we need. This is what we depend upon. This is what will give us life, health, and strength. And fourthly, God gave us the Eucharist so that we can always remember him. You see what Moses said? Moses said that God did all of this so that we may have him in mind. 
so that we may always remember him. And you shall remember the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 22 verse 19, do this in memory of me. Well, you see, some translations say, do this in remembrance of me. So, with the Holy Eucharist, we cannot forget God. With the Holy Eucharist, we cannot forget what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Just as the people of Israel were never to forget what God did for them by saving them and rescuing them from Egypt, we also should not forget what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary every time we receive the Holy Eucharist. Now, you see, that the Holy Eucharist is our new manner. It is what we need to carry us to heaven. Lesson number four. The Eucharist is more than a mere symbol. The Eucharist is more than just a symbol. The Eucharist is not, is not, like, is not like the body and blood of Christ. It is not a representation. No, it is the real deal. As we know, Jesus teaching on the Holy Eucharist, the, the teaching of Jesus on the Holy Eucharist did not go down well with many of his followers. Many people walked away. As we saw in our gospel passage, the Jews disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus knew that they were disputing among themselves. Jesus did not even try to, he didn't try to color his words. He didn't try to change it. He didn't try to say, oh, that is not what I mean. Jesus Christ, in fact, he repeated himself again and again, showing that he was not simply mincing words. He wasn't speaking in parables. Jesus meant every word. He didn't mind that the people were leaving. Jesus even asked the twelve if they wanted to leave as well, knowing that the Holy Eucharist is God, all and entire. Look at that sequence that we just took just now. Ponder on, 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 on what, what we hear in the sequence. That if, if 1,000 receive, and if one, one, one receive, it is the same Jesus. That even from the, the tiny particle, and from that tiny particle, it is the same Jesus. That the, the Holy Eucharist is Jesus himself. And knowing that the Eucharist is Jesus, is not just a mere symbol of Jesus, entails that we worship the Holy Eucharist. We worship the Holy Eucharist. This is why we we'll kneel down. This is why when we do adoration, we kneel down before the monstrance. We are not, we are not simply uh, uh, kneeling down before the, what is the, the container. We are kneeling down before what is inside the container, which is the, we are, we are not kneeling down just because of the monstrance, but kneeling down because Jesus is inside the monstrance. Jesus is in the symbolium. And if you notice, at the beginning of every Mass, we normally genuflect towards the Blessed Sacrament because Jesus is there. Because in Holy Communion, what is inside the Blessed Sacrament? It is the Eucharist. It is the body and the blood of Jesus. So because we know it is not a symbol, because the Eucharist is not just a symbol, the Eucharist is God himself, that is why we worship the Eucharist. That is why we treat the Eucharist with all the reverence and dignity that God truly deserves. This is what St. Paul, this is why St. Paul wants us. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Beginning from verse 27 to 30, we hear the words of St. Paul, who says, Whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. For everyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment upon himself. This is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-seven to thirty. Saint Paul says these things to us that we may be conscious that the Holy Eucharist is not something to be toyed with. It is not something to joke about. It is not a symbol. And this is the only reason why we do not allow everyone to partake of the Eucharist. 
This is why there are all the laws and restrictions concerning the Holy Eucharist. Because we know it is God. So that what we want to ensure is that those who are coming to receive the Eucharist, they understand that it is God himself. They understand that it is not simply a wafer. You know, it, 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 really, it really pains me when I see, for instance, Chimamanda Adichie in her book, Popular Abyss refer to Holy Communion as a piece of wafer. She doesn't understand. And many of those who, who, who may read it, who may not be Catholics, will not understand that the Holy Eucharist is not just biscuit. The Holy Eucharist is not just bread. It looks like bread. Yes, it tastes like bread. But it, it has become the body and the blood of Christ. This is a great miracle that happens at consecration in Holy Communion. So we ensure that those who come forward, they understand that they know it is God himself that they are coming to receive. And secondly, that they are in a state of grace. To be in a state of grace is to be free from sin, having gone for confession and fasted for at least one hour before. Every, even the manner of reception is such that we give all dignity and respect to God. In recent times, this Holy Eucharist has suffered. God has suffered a lot, a lot of indignation as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. So many people have said so many things and people have done so many things. And you see, it, 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 is, it is unimaginable but real that some people will say uh, uh, the coronavirus can, 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 can enter somebody through the Eucharist. It is not possible because it is, it is, it is not just bread, it is the body and the blood of God. If for anything, God himself will bring healing to you when you receive Holy Communion in a state of grace, when you receive Holy Communion with faith. You know many people come forward for Holy Communion and they just come because others are going. They don't prepare for communion. They are not in a state of grace. They don't understand. They just see people going and they say, they, they too go. And they hear people say amen. They want to say amen. No, 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 no. You see, you can attend Mass one million times. But the day you will attend Mass, you yourself you will know that you attended Mass. The day that you prepare well, at least one hour fasting before the time of Mass, and that the day that you partake fully and listen to every single word that is spoken during the Mass, and then you, you prepare very well for communion and you come forward to receive Jesus, I tell you, your experience, words will not be enough to describe it. When you really, when you really come with faith, when you really come knowing that it is God himself whom you are receiving. The Eucharist is not just a symbol. The Eucharist is God himself who has made himself so close and so available to us. Lesson number five. The Eucharist unites us as one. In celebrating the Trinity last Sunday, we noted that just as God is perfectly united as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we who are children of God must learn from God to be united and live in peace with one another. Once again, in the Holy Eucharist, we see another encouraging factor for us to live in unity. There is an African adage which says, you cannot eat from the same plate with me and still be my enemy. That is why when you visit a, a, a typical African person, they will first of all say, I come and eat. Because when we eat from the same plate, we are not supposed to fight each other afterwards. So also, St. Paul tells us today, because there is one bread, we, are, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one. Because we all partake of the one bread. First Corinthians 10, 17. It is a shame, a very big shame, and a scandal, that after eating from the one bread, we could still be having quarrels, hatred, suspicions, gossips, betrayers, and so on in our midst. Different camps. I belong to this camp, I belong to that camp. After eating from the one bread, 
that you still see your fellow Christian or you still see your fellow brothers and sisters and you still thinking about oh, this one is from this tribe, me are from this tribe. Racism, after partaking of the one bread, we are supposed to be one. We are united. In conclusion, my dear friends in Christ, you see, look at the lessons that we have learned today. That the Holy Eucharist is God Himself. The Holy Eucharist is a symbol of God, God's love for us, because God wants to remain with us forever. The Holy Eucharist is not a symbol. The Holy Eucharist is the real deal. The Holy Eucharist is our manna, the new manna that we need in order for us to attain eternal life in heaven. The Holy Eucharist is Jesus in our midst. When we take Holy Communion, we receive Jesus, we receive life, we receive health for our soul. May God continually bless His words in our heart. May our reception of the body and the blood of Jesus not bring, bring us judgment and condemnation, but through the loving mercy of God, may our partaking of this body and blood of Christ bring us all health of mind and body and lead us to eternal life in heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rise now to profess our faith. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Yes, I believe. In the heart of the star, and the Holy Spirit, yes, I believe. Mighty Father, I believe, do you believe? Yes, I believe. You created heaven and earth, do you believe? Yes, I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Son of God, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe. Equal in the Father's power, do you believe? Yes, I believe. And truly more kings when they do you believe? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. And from heaven came to earth. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe. Of the Virgin Mary, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Suffer so death was crucified. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. And he rose up from the dead. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe. He ascended to heaven. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Kingdom has no end. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. In the spirit, I believe. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Lord, I believe in the Father. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Either God and glorified, glorified, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Even Holy Catholic Church, do you believe? Yes, I believe. And my baptism process, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, yes, I believe. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Living in the world to come. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Amen. Yes, I believe. Amen.
Yes, I believe. Who created heaven and earth? Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Let us pray. We have all gathered here, my dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption. Let us therefore acknowledge the Almighty God that the whole world may be watered from these springs of all blessings and life. We pray, O oh Lord. In your goodness and sorrows, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, and sorrows, O oh Lord, and sorrows. We pray for Francis, our Pope, and Augustine, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge. Let us pray to the Lord. In your goodness and sorrows, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, and sorrows, O oh Lord, and sorrows. We pray for peace among nations that deliver from all turmoil, the people may serve God in freedom of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. In your goodness and sorrows, O Lord, O Lord, and sorrows, O Lord, and sorrows. Let us pray for the elderly who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. With an everlasting love, you care for me, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love. For ourselves gathered here, that as God did not cease to sustain us with the Holy Eucharist, the body and the blood of Christ, we may know how to receive Holy Communion in a state of grace, and that we may hold even now to the things that endure forever. Let us pray to the Lord. With an everlasting love, you care for me, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love. We ask our Virgin Mary, our mother of, mother of God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, let us now present to God once again the intentions of our hearts, because we know that God loves us. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you so that they may seek at your prompting, so that what we seek at your prompting we may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father draws him, and I will raise him up.
Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings here presented through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hands. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is surely right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for at the last supper with his apostles establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb the acceptable gift of perfect praise nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery you make them holy so that the human race founded by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity and so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out as without end we acclaim. to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Keep in mind that Jesus of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Agatha, and with all the saints, and most constant intercession in your presence, rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, uh, Pope and Augustine, our uh, bishop, the honor of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family whom you have gathered before you. 
in your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as you are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. Dear, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him with a man in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor. teaching we bear to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom the power and glory, glory are yours, yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. It takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of all the world. Happy are those who are called to the sanctuary of the Lamb.
Let us now pray the act of spiritual communion. When we say this prayer with faith, Jesus comes to us and it is equivalent to receiving the body and the blood of Jesus. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O sacrament custody, O sacrament design, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment O sacrament custody, O sacrament design, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment time. O sacrament custody, O sacrament design, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment time. Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yes, I am and yes, I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yes, I am and yes, I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yes, I am and yes, I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be born without end. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the lord be with you and with your spirit. spirit bow your heads and pray for god's blessing May Almighty God bless you in His kindness. Amen. May He pour out His saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith Amen. and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Happy Sunday to you all. Same, Same to, to you, Father. Father. Catholic hymn 536. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, 